Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited to kick off the first IEEE conference on secure and trustworthy machine learning. Um, unfortunately, Patrick will not be able to make it uh, today. He had a family emergency earlier this week, so he won't be able to join us. So you're stuck with me for a good 15 minutes uh, before the first keynote. So the first thing we wanted to do uh, to start this conference is take a step back. So back in 2015, 2016, there was a really big pickup in the interest for work on adversarial machine learning at the intersection of computer security and machine learning. This whole field started a lot earlier, uh, basically as soon as people uh, began using machine learning for spam detection. But in 2015, 2016, the interest in deep learning really started to pick up. And so people started working on this question more. Very soon, we saw a lot of interest from different funding agencies, different government uh, agencies started programs to sustain this research. And so we started organizing a lot of workshops. So we would see workshops on AML at machine learning conferences, security conferences. But the problem with these workshops is they always were in one home community, right? So you'd have more people from ML or more people from computer security, but not enough exchanges between the two communities. And so we started talking to uh, IEEE. And after a couple of years of negotiating and convincing them, they have agreed to sponsor this new conference just dedicated to trustworthy machine learning. So I'm very excited about it. Um, one way to think about what we're here to do uh, for this first edition is to look at the mission statement that we drafted. So we're trying to expand on the theoretical and practical understandings of vulnerabilities inherent to machine learning systems, explore the robustness of machine learning algorithms and systems, and aid in developing a unified, coherent scientific community which aims to build trustworthy ML systems. And for me, the most important word in this very long statement is coherent, right? As I just explained, what I'm hoping we will achieve this year is creating this new community that's dedicated to trustworthy ML to advance the pace of research by blending our expertise from the different communities that we're all from. And this is really something that is reflected in our program committee made up of researchers from all of these communities, computer security, machine learning, uh, fairness, accountability, and transparency. So I want to expand a really big thank you to all of our program committee members. I think beyond just reviewing papers, which is of course a fundamental contribution to the program that we're seeing this week, a lot of people went above and beyond and attracted submissions from these different communities. And I'm really happy to look at the program and see that all these areas that we mentioned in the call for papers are well represented in what we'll hear from uh, this week. So a big thank you to the PC. Uh, I also want to take the time to thank the organizers. Uh, Amy Hassan was the general chair, Johan Begin, the web chair. We had a lot of help uh, making this possible from Melissa, who was uh, at the registration booth just earlier who's supporting Patrick and Reka back in Toronto, who's supporting me. Uh, you can thank them for many reasons. To give you an example, uh, if you are eating lunch today, it's thanks to Reka because she noticed two or three weeks ago that I forgot to order lunch. Okay. We would also like to thank our steering committee. So Bean Kim, Zico Coulter, Bo Lee, Alexandra Madri, Ben Zhao. When we started really shaping the conference, they gave us a lot of input, uh, which was foundational to define the scope of the conference and make it the event that it is uh, today. I also want to thank our sponsors, CIFAR, NSF, the University of Toronto through the schwartz Reisman Institute, the Vector Institute, MITRE, uh, as well as Microsoft, who is the inaugural industry sponsor. So our sponsors uh, gave us the ability to uh, give money for students to travel to the conference, but also to pay for some of the IEEE fees. So we're very uh, grateful for their support. So now the program, why are we all here today? 
So we had about 150 submissions um, after the full paper deadline. Out of these, we accepted 40 papers, three SOKs, so systematization of knowledge papers, two position papers, 35 research papers. Um, if you're not sure what the difference is between these papers, I will not give you all the details right now, but you can find that in the CFP. Um, and so the acceptance rate is about 26% uh, in the end. How do we get there? Well, as a lot of you know, because you are authors, it was a pretty compressed timeline, right? So in the summer, the, all the preparation for the conference was finalized. So we announced the call for papers and had a really short time to turn around the decisions uh, in, in the fall. So we had two rounds, an early reject in between, and then a discussion phase after the second round. The review form was fairly standard. Um, a couple of things to point out is that we uh, encourage the reviewers to expressly state what are the things that would change their minds when taking the decision. So we had a specific box for that. And um, we took care in having scores that are at a certain granularity that forces the reviewers to take a stand for the paper for or against it. The results are that about a little under half of the paper made it through the first round. And then we uh, requested an additional review or more uh, when there was more uncertainty. Um, and after the second round, we basically give those reviews to the authors. And so there, this is for me the key takeaway from this reviewing process is that we allowed the authors uh, to edit the paper as much as they wanted during the discussion period. And I know this is not always standard in all communities, but uh, this really worked well, at least in my opinion, um, because when we look at the average score of papers before and after that discussion uh, phase, which was also interactive, we see that a lot of the papers that had borderline scores in average moved away from that borderline average to either an accept or a reject. So we had really much more certain outcomes at the end of the discussion phase. And I hope other conferences will uh, implement these, th this kind of discussion uh, phase. And then uh, the not notifications were sent. 11 papers were issued a major revision uh, which was very well scoped. So we didn't issue a revision unless we thought it would be feasible in about three weeks. Um, and, and so nine of these papers were accepted at the end of the major revision. So today, one of my uh, happy moments is to give out paper awards. So best paper awards. I'd like to thank Elisa Redmiles and Xiao Wang uh, for selecting these papers. They read uh, a lot of papers, a lot of the reviews that were given to these papers. In the end, they decided to award two best paper awards. So fortunately, we had enough funding from the sponsors to give two, two awards instead of one. And I'm going to announce the winners um, in no particular order, right? So this is, I think, based on the paper ID, probably. Uh, so don't read anything into that. I have um, beautiful... Uh, best paper award certificates on the desk over there. So I'll be very happy to hand over those. Uh, it's, it's a whole story. I had to wait one hour at Staples yesterday to uh, receive those two pieces of paper. So um, I'm excited. So best paper award, the first one, SOK, a validity perspective on evaluating the justified use of data-driven decision-making algorithms. So let's give a round of applause to the authors. And then the second paper is Optimal Data Acquisition with Privacy-Aware Agents. So we'll have another round of applause. All right. So another thing that we wanted to do today is to acknowledge that a lot of the reviewers really went above and beyond during the review uh, phase. And so these are people who put in really all their energy in the review process, um, going above and beyond in interacting with the authors, making sure that we were keeping track of the edits made to the papers. Um, and so again, I want to thank everyone on the PC uh, and to also award 
the people on the screen here, a uh, notable reviewer award, and thank them again for, for taking the time to help us. Uh, it's, it saved me quite a few reminder emails, I can tell you. At some point, I crashed Outlook uh, because I was sending too many reminder emails about SiteML, so I really want to, uh, to thank all these reviewers. So another round of applause. All right, so now the last part of these opening remarks to logistics. If at any point during the next three days you need help, please uh, send a message to 2023 at siteml.org. What will happen is that all the organizers that are on site will receive a Slack notification. So given that a lot of you work in security, I will not try to think about all the bad things that could happen from that. Um, if you need Wi-Fi and you're not staying at the hotel, you can try these, this uh, coupon here, SiteML2023, um, and it should let you in uh, the Wi-Fi. If you need bathroom, there is one that you probably saw here. There's another one just around the Starbucks in, in the lobby. And so here in yellow, I've circled the areas that we'll be in for the three days. This is the main ballroom. Next door, we have the lunchroom. And then the room after that down the hall is where we will have the breakout room for just Friday, Friday afternoon. This schedule, again, if you work in security, please go ahead and scan this QR code as soon as possible. Otherwise, you can type in siteml.org slash schedule for a safer uh, experience. Um, just one thing I want to point out is uh, Johan made this amazing website. Don't forget to click on the cells, this is how you will get all the information. So you'll, if you click on any of these cells, it will give you either the abstract or the list of papers that are presented, the session chair, and so on. So I'll, I'll give a quick overview, um, and then we can get started. So for each of the papers, they will be presented in two ways. So this is, again, maybe new for uh, people from the security community. The first part will be the standard talk, 15 minutes plus five minute Q&A. Um, but then we'll have tomorrow a poster session, which will be in this room. Um, so we won't have any easels uh, because the easels would have cost us $2,600. So instead we'll use uh, painter's tape all around the room to have the 40 uh, papers uh, put out. And so here, this is really an experiment where we're trying to see if this will encourage more discussions uh, among the authors and also the attendees. So I hope it will be, it will be a successful experiment um, tomorrow afternoon. On Friday afternoon, we'll have uh, a little bit of a briefing about the competitions that were organized ahead of SatML. So we had three competitions. I want to thank all the organizers listed on this slide here for taking the time to put together these challenges. Um, on Friday afternoon, we'll hear from two of them. The, the third organizers uh, could not make it. So we'll have uh, the model attribution challenge in this room, and then we'll have the training data extraction attack on large language models. We'll be in the breakout room that's right down the hall. So that will be the last thing on Friday. On Friday, we'll also have two tutorials. Um, so I'm excited that we'll hear about differential privacy from uh, Gautam Kamath from the University of Waterloo. It'll be Friday morning. And then uh, Jacob Steinhardt from UC Berkeley will give a tutorial on alignment, which I'm very much uh, looking forward to on Friday afternoon. Now, the last part of the program are our two keynote speakers. So I'm very excited that uh, we'll have these two keynote addresses on two aspects of trustworthy machine learning. Um, tomorrow afternoon, we'll hear from Timnit Gebru uh, on causing harm while claiming to build AGI. So that will be the first thing in uh, the afternoon tomorrow. And then in just a few minutes, uh, as soon as I'm done, we'll hear from Zico Coulter. So Zico Coulter doesn't need any introduction, but I will still give an introduction. Uh, so he's an associate professor at Carnegie Mellon University, as well as the chief scientist of AI at Bosch. Uh, Zico has worked on a lot of foundational machine learning research and optimization research. Uh, but I think to this community, the most relevant work that he's done is, of course, on robustness. 
in machine learning. And uh, many of you have probably read a lot of his papers. Uh, I still use uh, a lot of the early results on certified robustness quite a bit in our projects. So I'm very much looking forward to this, to this first keynote that Zico will give on uh, sort of a retrospective on certified robustness, how we got there and where we are uh, five years later. Um, Zico has received too many awards, so we will not list them all, uh, but um, I'm very much looking forward to your talk, Zico. So if you're already ready, we can even get started a little early and get, get more time for questions. Thank you so much for joining us.